Sorry, let's go to our country. If not for air peace, what is the wrong pieces? Here this morning, I came in with the Nigerians that are voluntarily returning to Nigeria from South Africa after the experiences they have had in the past years, particularly the very recent experience of the destruction of their property, looting of their property and everything. A number of them are, as you will see them later, they are excited, they want to go back, they feel that they can do something in Nigeria better than what they are doing. Can you please confirm to us the total number of Nigerians that are ready to go back home? Last night, I left the office 2 a.m. this morning and we're still compiling. As of the last compilation, we have about 900 Nigerians. They are still registering today. We had not killed into the data those that registered yesterday. So we are looking at over a thousand now that may have uh, reported at the embassy to document themselves. What percentage of people coming on board are undocumented? So like half of them? Or? Yes, it's about half because those are the people we put. We give. Um, uh, emergency travel certificate and uh, for some they have a passport that is not expired but they may not have resident status in real sense it's quite uh, it will be half of the of them or if not more can you tell us probably the number of casualties that we have i mean talking of foreigners generally we have within this period we have lost about two but we have not lost a nigerian during this process, during this latest incident, we've not lost any Nigerian because what happened was more an, of an attack and destruction of the properties of Nigerians and other foreigners. But of course, we are most hit, particularly in a particular street they call Julie Street in uh, JP Town, which is the CBD of uh, the Central Business District of uh, Johannesburg, where our people are many. And I could have gone through that street. It's a very long street, and they have very big shops, car marts. I could see over 100 or 200 cars burnt in that particular incident. So, in case of casualty of death during this time, this latest incident, aside from some of the people we have lost in the past through one maybe police brutality and others, we have not lost a Nigerian within this period. And we are happy with that, we thank God for that, but bad enough, we have lost a lot of things. Have the mission reached out to the, um, to the South African government about this whole thing? I mean, because if it happened now, it can happen again in future. Reach out in what sense? Uh, like for maybe engage them, yeah. to talk to them about... Of course, we are engaging them, we are engaging the authorities, the Minister of Foreign Affairs here, which is... Uh, Minister of uh, International Relations and Cooperation of South Africa met with, uh, a few days ago with the African ambassadors and they were quite uh, uh, not apologetic about, I mean, trying to move relations uh, forward. He did explain and also sought for the, the uh, comments and cooperation from the various uh, African missions and also asked for input as a way of ensuring that uh, these things do not happen again. That was a few days ago, the African ambassadors, and of course at various levels, they are trying to also uh, condemn it, even though at certain levels too, they try to say that it is not xenophobia, that it is criminality. And what we see is that if you have criminality, there is a way to deal with criminality. You deal, you deal with criminality as criminality. Crime is not a national of any country. Whatever person is involved in crime, deal with him in crime. And even us as a government in Nigeria will also help you to deal with the issues of crime if you bring us in. But I think, I, I, I believe that um, it's quite... Um, for them too, they are very worried about this, what is going on. I've been receiving calls from ministers and from some other internally. 
they are very worried. Of course, they are lucky. What we explained in, this, in the initial stage now is that this is an individual effort. A Nigerian individual has made this plane available for free for now as part of his contribution to uh, solving the challenges on ground. And that, of course, I know that government has is fully in favor of what is going on so that at least our people who are stranded here, our people who have lost their property, our people who are challenged in various ways by the policies that confront them here, they have an opportunity to be part of this uh, laudable uh, initiative that uh, Barrister Allen Onyema has brought up. I think he's a wonderful Nigerian, one of the greatest I've seen doing this kind of thing. We are very, very appreciative of what he's doing and we know that we'll give him all the necessary cooperation to ensure that we have a successful and history operation. There is a news going on online that these Nigerians, probably somewhere, I don't know, they have been charged $1,000 no, no. before they can get on this flight. Why is meant for free? No, well, so can you please clear that to Nigeria? Yes, I've heard that. In fact, I spoke with him earlier, sometime uh, earlier this week, and he told me that he heard that some Nigerians are trying to collect $300 from people uh, prospective uh, passengers of this aircraft to be able to have a place. I told him that what we are going to do is such that that will not be possible. The 1,000 you are talking about, I doubt if there is anything in the real sense like that. Because the process we have put in place at the missions and we are, is such that we sent out notices which clearly indicated that this flight is free and that there is no charges at all and they should be conscious of anybody that wants to charge them in any way and they are registering directly and filling forms giving the necessary information and have, we have contact we have related with them one on one and none has told us that anybody has collected money from him or her there is only one case that i met and that person is not on the aircraft because he has not gone through the process. So he cannot go. And I say whoever, maybe to uh, some uh, rant, that he gave somebody, somebody, he gave somebody that I say yes, but your name is not here. So if you want to go, go and collect your money, but come down to the mission and register. Anybody that registers and will process you, you will be on the flight. So I have not confirmed one thousand or three hundred dollar anywhere but of course we met one person of whose name is not even on our list who has not done what he needs to do because what you need to do to to take this flight is to come and fill a form at the mission you don't take the form away supply all the necessary data and the necessary documents and we process you so on our part that is not possible what is the reason for this attack on Nigerians? It was like there's a, there's a focus on Nigerians. We have what you call xenophobia. And the issue here again is that there is, a, there is, a, there is what, there are some perceptions, negative perceptions. And some of these perceptions are based, I cannot really understand how they are based. For instance, this country is a country that they has a high rate of crime. The crime is, is one of the countries with the highest rate of crime. For instance, if you go on internet today and check, not less than about 50 people are murdered in South Africa in one day. That is the statistics that you see on the internet has about 20,000 murder cases in a year. So when you hear mother here too, you see that it is in a very volatile society. But we are concerned because sometimes it is as a result of police brutality, which we have noticed and we have taken up and we, are, we condemn and we do not agree with. 
but sometimes too it, such murders could be as a result of being in a place where crime has taken place or you are killed because somebody wants to take something from you forcefully and you resist you are a dead man so generally there is this feeling of insecurity as a whole in this country where you live in this country where you stay who you associate with and what you do matters a lot you need to keep yourself safe if not anything is permitted to happen the country generally has a high rate of crime one of the highest in the world and it's part of the thing that we are going to yes i understand you must have put in place um, a very huge logistic to achieve this what? evacuation so what are the challenges that you must have faced yes doing this? yeah we have put in a lot of logistics to achieve this with the assistance of the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs at home uh, who has given us all the necessary cooperation even though uh, things are tight but because of the nature of this operation we are ready to put in everything to make it succeed part of the challenges of course finance is a challenge but I know that uh, uh, eventually will be assisted to be able to complete it but we are making everything possible within the limits of our resources to ensure that we embark on it even whether it is personal or whatever to make sure it goes the, some of the challenges we face is proper documentation of Nigerians sometimes we have developed a structure that will be able to do the database but sometimes deliberately people don't feel fine so we keep moving for instance yesterday i had sent a manifest of this aircraft since uh, yesterday since the, uh, the previous day but by yesterday we have to be calling individuals one after the other to ensure that they will be on the flight and in the process we saw that some people are also not going to be we have to look at trying to replace them and again we have to tell them this aircraft is not meant for people who just want to go on holidays and return back. So we have to now tell them that if you use this aircraft to come back will be difficult for you because it's not going to be the authority, immigration authorities will not just accept it that way. Why do we do that? Just to discourage those who can afford it but want to take advantage of it. Why we leave the vulnerable ones behind? So we've got these challenges. We also got challenges of women that are ready to go because they feel they must leave this country or be maltreated by their husbands that they brought them here. They didn't know that the situation is bad for them, the way the husbands are treating them. But the challenge we have in that area is that the husbands will turn around, they started accusing that they want to take their wives without their consent. So we now demanded for consent letters and data pages of their passport to be able to accept any lady with with uh, children without whom the husband is not traveling with these are part of the challenges that we face and of course many have come from certain areas of this country they don't have where to stay they don't have resources to be able to get themselves into a hotel i've accommodated a number of them from time to time, even to this morning, 20, I accommodated 20 somewhere. We brought them in this morning, fed them. So we have a number of challenges like that. For some, I provided some places at the consulate, at the consulate general's office there. And some of them say, look, even if they sit here and talk, they are okay. That is how some of them were able to make this flight this morning, because they have come from various areas. Nigerians in South Africa, have so much encouraged by the attitude and prompt response of the Nigerian government to the issues on ground. They have never seen it. According to them, they have never seen it that way. And they are very, very excited about going to be able to see how they can start a new life. Those of them, if you interview them, they will tell you, nobody is angry. They are just going. In fact, as I was passing now, all of them wanted to snap with me. They said, look, they are happy to go to, back to Nigeria. 
right from the mission, we see to them to the extent I know almost every one of them buy them food. They are so happy. And of course, to the proprietor of the Epis Airlines, Barista Len Onyema, I've spoken with him a number of times. I tell you, we are Nigerians are so happy. They want to see him. That who is this man that is doing this kind of thing? And I believe that whatever he has started, whatever business that he is involved in, like this particular airline business, is not going to regret anything at all. There will not be any time that he has to regret because things are going to be moving from one level of glory to the other for him. We are happy with him. We encourage him to continue doing what he's doing. And the Almighty God will never forsake him any day. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Nice having you, sir. Thank you.